What's up guys? It's your boy Rich here, back at it. Hey, where are you going? Where are we going? Ooh, I'm heavier than I thought. I've got to hit the gym. But in the meantime, let's talk about Geno's Ocean Rover versus Manta's Ocean King. Okay, so since we're talking homage watches, I'm going to be upfront and say I am not a fan of them. So if the argument is it's impossible to make a diver's watch without some resemblance to the Rolex Submariner, well, I would point to IWC's Aqua Timer or Omega's Planet Ocean or Blanc Pond's 50 Fathoms or almost any Panerai, Seiko's Marine Mast or Casio's Echo Drive Divers. None of those watches resemble the Submariner. So, if we're going to make a watch that resembles the Submariner and is, quote, an homage, it ought to be something really special. Okay, so the legal definition of homage is a special honor or respect shown publicly. But my interpretation is an homage is a fancy word for replica, which is a fancy word for fake. And while there are legitimate homages outside of the watch world, not so much in the watch world. An homage is the fastest way to make a buck. The quickest entry into the watch industry. And the makers know this. They know that there is a massive market for low cost watches that resemble the expensive one. Especially a Rolex. And most homages are cheap crap that look like this one. So where does Geno's Ocean Rover and Monta's Ocean King fit in? Are they just another cheap homage or are they a cut above all the rest? So let's begin with Geno's Ocean Rover. This is a fairly new brand that was established in 2011. And yes, there is some controversy surrounding this brand, but I don't want to beat a dead horse. I think we should move past it, but I will cover it briefly for those of us who may not be familiar with it. And in a nutshell, it's a man, an American made watch that was caught using a Swiss Etta movement, a very similar controversy that plagued Shinola. But let's get back to the watch. Janelle's Ocean Rover is 40 millimeters and it carries a retail of $1,300, which is priced a lot higher than most homages, but we can also get a discount on Janelle's own website. Uh, their movement, by all indications, is a modified American version of the Eta 28 24 and without making this dramatic I'm going to be clear and say this is a first rate watch I was really impressed by this watch I've seen the Geno Ocean Rover and handled this countless times over the past six months eight months and as much as I am not an homage fan uh, it is near impossible not to appreciate the build quality on this watch. The finishing is t is first rate. It is a really comfortable watch and even the bracelet is super comfortable and it has a really nice clasp. There is really nothing to like about this watch and whether the owners is, whoever the owner is, John McMurtry or, or Charles uh, Gino, uh, it's kind of too bad that they didn't make a standalone watch because they've proven that they can make a quality watch. But I also understand that it probably would not have received any attention if they didn't make a watch that looked like the Rolex. So not only is Gino a cut above all the other homages, but it actually raised the bar significantly. Most of us define a fake as anyone from outside of the brand, in this case Rolex, that uses that Rolex name on the dial. And we justify an homage as long as there is a legitimate name on the dial. But this is wrong because those same watches use the same factors and the parts as the fakes. And they participate in the same exploitation of child labor laws and criminal activity. We know there is a lot of wiggle room with the Swiss made label where it used to be 51% uh, of the watch needed to be assembled in Switzerland, but that also left a whole half of mysterious origins. This is not the case with Geno because Geno is an American made watch and to earn the made in USA label set forth by the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC, the rules are a lot more stringent. The FTC says that virtually all components of the item have to be made in the USA. And what that means is, for example, the box that comes with the item can be made elsewhere. It can be made in China or Mexico or Canada because the box has nothing to do with the product. So Geno is safe from this kind of activity as long as it's made in the USA and that's something that I can stand behind. Let's switch gears and talk about Manta's Ocean King. This is also a really new brand, practically a baby. They were established in 2015. 
Uh, it's also 40 millimeters or 40.7 millimeters to be exact and its retail is $1,700. There is no murkiness with their movement. They use the Salida SW300 which is a really good movement. I've covered Salida movements in the past. This is regarded as a better movement than the Eta 2824 and the Monta was the brainchild of the people behind Everest watch straps which uh, are known to make the best strap for Rolex watches. There are a handful of really top-notch uh, strap makers, but uh, Everest is by far and above better than all the rest. They make straps that are perfectly fitting for Rolex watches, and now they've created their own lineups of watches. Interestingly, as this price is currently at $1,700, and I think it's gonna be available this August, uh, at its initial press releases, it was marketed as a $3,500 watch. And even then, uh, the owners were saying that they received pushback from because they were going to charge even more than $3,500. I'm not sure what that amount is. Let's say $4,000. But during their focus groups, they said that was just too high for a brand new brand. So they lowered it to $3,500 and now it's $1,700, which is a a smart choice because if they would have kept it at 3500 that would have put them squarely against Tudor and they would have been crushed they would have been um, they wouldn't have had any chance before they even got started so while $1700 is priced a few hundred dollars more than Genoa and a lot more than most other homages this is really a fantastic watch is this better than Genoa well you know it's my preference I think this is a sharp looking watch and it is just a well-made watch. The, the bezel action on this is as good as I have seen any watch. And I've had an Aqua Timer, the IWC Aqua Timer, but the bezel action on this is, is near perfect. It's really smooth. The finishing and the fit on this Manta is, it's worthy to be a $3,500 watch. It is, it is that good. Um, while Genos is a mirror reflection of the Rolex Submariner, the Monte has its own unique identity. And while it's not a mirror reflection of the Rolex Submariner, I would say it's a closer reflection to Blanc Pond's 50 Fathoms. And that's not a bad thing. The Salida movement offers 42 hours of power reserve versus uh, Geno's 38 hours of power reserve. And both watches are water resistant to 1,000 feet. Both of these watches are extraordinarily well made. Another advantage of the Monta, or I should say preference, is their use of the ceramic bezel, which comes in blue, black, and steel. And I say preference because there are some people who don't care about the extra weight that ceramic carries and are worried about how fragile it might be. But unless we're planning to be body slammed by John Cena on the concrete while wearing our watch, we should be fine with that ceramic bezel. Another reason of why I approve of Gino and Monta is because of their painstaking attention to detail, which is not something we get from those cheap crappy watches which are meant to be disposed of, whereas these watches are meant to be worn as a real watch. And while both of these watches have raised the bar of what an homage should be, of what it could be, does it mean that there aren't any other watches to be considered as an upgrade? So while I would be happy with either the Juno or the Manta, more so the Manta, uh, these watches have exceeded what these watches should be, there might be one other watch to be considered as an upgrade, and that's Tudor's 58. Uh, which is priced at 3600 for the bracelet or 3200 on a strap and is at 39 millimeters. Um, there are three reasons why I think the Tudor should be considered at, as an upgrade to either of the Geno or the Manta. And the first one is the Tudor name, which carries a very rich and storied history. The second is their in-house movement, which is 70 hours of power reserve, which is nearly twice that of Geno's and about 40% of Manta's. But if neither of those are important enough to you, and while all three watches aspire to be here in the long term, Tudor will be here in the long term. I think this would be a different conversation 10 years later if both the Geno and the Manta are around. But for right now, I think uh, Tudor's history and the fact that they are going to be a really stable brand should be a consideration because seventeen hundred or even a thousand dollars is 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 enough to to worry about the future of those brands. The price gap between either the Geno and the Monta to the Tudor is a lot smaller than the price gap between the Tudor and the nine thousand dollar plus Submariner. So there's that.
I really hope both Gino and Manta can create their own unique identity because of their superior build quality. Both companies clearly know how to make a really good and well-built watch. Um, and I hope that they can get away from the stigma of being an homage brand. Uh, but I hope that because of their superior build quality and as long as they can make some unique looking watches that don't resemble any other watch brand, I hope they can succeed. I think they can succeed because of their early momentum. One other factor to consider with any of these watches is perception. And that perception is that these are a Rolex wannabe. And that's even true for Tudor, especially for Tudor. But as long as we know we are wearing a first rate watch and not one of those cheap homages that we can find on the street because both of the Gino and the Manta have set the new bar for what an homage should be, we should be happy with any of these choices. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time. I want to point out viewer Neil Lucente for his comment in pointing out that Hans Wildorf might have been responsible for the knockdown instead of a knockoff when he created his Tudor line of watches. I thought that made a lot of sense. Nice comment, Neil. So both watches loom is really great. While I while the Monte uses the super glumen of <laughs> So while the Monte uses the super glumen, oh. let's talk Genoa's Ocean Rover and Manta's.